Good morning, everybody. I had a lot of success with a lot of different characters on Hardcore Season 5, but one of the first characters I played was a favored soul, and I really enjoyed it. I think that Spellcaster favored soul is really, really strong right now. It isn't the top end in terms of damage, but in terms of ease of use and accessibility, goddamn does Favorite Soul just feel fantastic. You've got great area of effect damage, great single target damage, incredible support in terms of healing yourself and your allies, and just absolutely fantastic buffs you can constantly throw out. Favorite Souls are also really tanky for some reason, getting a whole bunch of extra hit points, or you could also take spell points if you want, and then on top of that being mobile, thanks to their leap of faith ability letting them dash all around the battlefield. Now for me, the type of favorite soul that I think is probably my favorite is easily the Spellcaster DPS favorite soul, and that is what I have for you today. Now I did play as a DPS Spellcaster favorite soul during Hardcore League, but this one I took in a slightly different direction, which is to say I went a little bit more aggressive. You see, on Hardcore, you want to get as many hit points as possible, and Favorite Soul can accommodate that. With the feat you get at level 7, Stout of Heart, it gives you a whole bunch of extra hit points, so your character is like super tanky during the entire leveling process and into epics. But you can also get Purity of Spirit, or whatever it's called, and instead of getting extra health, you get extra spell points. Now, the difference in your health and spell point values and how valuable each thing is, I'm not 100% certain on the exact breakdown of that, but what I can say is when you have a gigantic, super mega massive mana pool, you can do whatever you want. Sure, maybe you will get killed if a monster touches you, but they can't because you have constant laser beams coming out of you because you have extra spell points. I went all in on the damage route, getting as many spell points as well as as much damage as possible, and it leveled like a dream. Not only that, it was actually kind of cheating. One of the benefits of Favorite Soul is that a lot of their spells actually have no saving throw, like Searing Light. And since this spell has no saving throw, it means you can actually just damage monsters even if they might have defenses that would be too high for you to otherwise damage. An easy example is that when you start entering Sharn in epics, pretty much every monster has evasion, which can be a death sentence if you're a character who doesn't have your gear sorted out yet. But favorite souls can use spells like Searing Light, as well as the spell-like abilities that they pick up for Searing Light, and use the Sharadi Mantle to get even more light damage than all of their spells that you can just pew pew monsters down even if you probably shouldn't be able to. Overcoming a monster's saving throws is very very difficult and requires a lot of gear. So why don't we just skip that entire process by casting a hundred spells that completely ignore it and that is the favored soul way. It makes this character very strong at just getting quickly geared because you can go right into epic elite once you're at level 30 assuming you have just enough hit points to survive without really needing to worry about what's coming your way. A lot of different characters have to start with Epic Normal or Epic Hard once they're at level 30, or sorry, Legendary, as I should probably say since the expansion is coming out. And Sharn, Feywild, and Saltmarsh can be quite intimidating given the fact that they give good gear, but the monsters are quite strong, but not for the favored soul who can just pew pew and walk right through it. Now I did want to include one minor point, which is that Obviously not everything is perfect about the Favored Soul. Every single class does have its drawback, and the one area that Favored Soul does have a drawback is the lower levels. Favored Soul is the type of character that because it's a spellcaster and also not getting really any area of effect until level 8, you are highly dependent on single target attacks which means your character might level a little bit slower. Now you do have the benefit of getting either Wisdom or Charisma to hit and damage with your favorite weapon, and since Wisdom is a great way to go, and Quarterstaves are a thing, just grab a Quarterstaff, grab Orion, and you can just kind of melee your way through your first few levels without having to worry about it, or just get a group. As Favorite Souls are fantastic early level healers thanks to the insane power of Close Wounds, allowing you to just kind of keep every single other person you encounter alive, and also still provide those punch shots and minor amounts of damage to your allies, and you can just be up there in the thick of it with the melee. So until level 8, you will need to struggle a little bit with just making sure your spells go off. Nimbus of Light is also kind of a terrible spell and really doesn't do everything you want it to do. However, Soundburst is now an actually competent DPS spell, and Sunbolt spell-like ability as well as Steering Light really start to make quick work of a lot of the monsters that you encounter. So if you are out there looking for a character that can get you easy gear 
towards the end game, especially if you're somebody who's maybe never gotten all the way up to level 30 before, and you're still unsure about exactly what direction you want to take with your characters, or maybe just you really need something to sit there at the level cap, Cast Your Favorite Soul is definitely a good one, and so I have one for you here. This one is going to be slightly different than the other version. However, if you want the tankier, more hardcore version, I will also include a link to that below along with the build guide here. And now it's time to pass it over to me with the build. There is no better way to level through heroics and epics than just by destroying every single monster in front of you with holy fire. And let me tell you, it gets so easy with Favored Soul. Now, the last Favored Soul video I put out was about a Dragonborn. This character is Dragonless. I am actually just an Azamar. But guess what? Doesn't matter. Uh, Favored Soul is just so good. It is totally irrelevant which one you decide to choose. All you need to do is say, I am stacking either my Wisdom or my Charisma, because that is how your character scales, and then the rest of your points go into Constitution, and then the rest of it literally doesn't matter. It's very, excuse me, very cool. And I love the fact that this character is so flexible with its stats. Additionally, these stats don't look too amazing. Reflex saves, Fortitude saves pretty low, Will saves pretty high. Um, but that's because, number one, my gear is garbage. I'm just using level like mostly 20 and below gear for pretty much every single slot. But most importantly, favorite souls get a lot of in-combat buffs, spells, and other things actually beef up their stats in combat, which is very cool. So what skills do you need on favorite soul? Not many. Heal, jump, spellcraft. That's pretty much the only ones I would recommend. Um, all these other ones are irrelevant. Uh, now, my character actually started with a 12 intelligence. This was too many. I would probably start with a 10 and then just take heal and spellcraft, if I'm being honest. You don't need concentration because concentration only matters if you're not using quicken, and I always use quicken. As far as the feats go, you take basically all of the metamagic feats because the metamagic feats are fantastic. They beef up your damage a lot, giving you maximize and quicken as soon as possible to also max out your spell-like abilities. And then later on, you want to make sure you take the spell casting feats specifically for evocation focus. For me personally, I find that if you have more past lives and you have more stats, you can also try to pick up other um, different spell powers or spell DCs such as enchantment or necromancy for some more crowd control effects. However, for blasting favorite soul, which is what this is, and mostly for leveling, just grab evocation. Everything else doesn't matter that much. As far as some of the other feeds you can pick up, though, I did take uh, Arcane Initiate, the epic past life for Wizard. Uh, important note, if you have one Wizard past life, you can take this on every character you play, which is plus one to the DCs of all your spells, which is better than every spell focus feed in the entire game, because it's all of them all at once. So very, very cool. Now, for your epic feats, you're going to be looking at Wellspring of Power, because it's the best thing for casting spells you're going to be able to pick up. Intensify, Embolden, Burst of Glacial Wrath, kind of just the run-of-the-mill stuff. You're going to see me mention this in the last three videos I posted, because, well, they're really good. More damage, more DCs, a freeze effect based on evocation, and then the best damage spell effect in the entire game. It's kind of amazing. As far as your legendary feat, you grab Sign of Celestia here. You cast almost exclusively Light and Fire spells, and so the Light spell damage is really good, plus 150 hit points, plus the evocation DCs. I mean, come on, it's just so powerful. You could also consider Scion of Fernia instead, um, but or Scion of the Plane of Fire. I think that Celestia is a little bit better because the extra hit points is very nice. Now, as far as your spells go, I tell you this every time. Good spells, not the bad spells. Uh, I actually did not take Deific Vengeance on this character. It's something you could consider doing. I personally didn't take it because, oddly enough, Deific Vengeance is not really buffed uh, by the Font of Power effect here as a favored soul. And so all of these spellcaster bonuses don't actually affect Deific Vengeance. So I don't think it's very good on favored soul. You start with Nimbus of Light, and then move on to Searing Light, and then just take Holy Smite, Flame Strike, Comet Fall, and then F Firestorm, and then your big Divine Wrath and Celestial Bombardment spells. Now, if you're wondering how I got through the first few levels, the answer is that Favorite Souls get to use the, whatever their main stat is for casting either Wisdom or Charisma whenever they attack with a favored weapon. And so since my character's favorite deity is Orion, uh, I decided to just use quarterstaffs. So until about level four or five, I just had a quarterstaff and beat people with it. And it worked really well because I got wisdom to hit and damage. I didn't need to have the two-handed fighting feats or anything because you just hit stuff. It doesn't go super fast, but I can't die because I'm healing and it was great. Um, I also completely forgot I had this effect and I never ever used Orion's instruction. Whoopsie doodles. Anyway, as far as your enhancements actually go, uh, this is my general setup. I don't think that this is the best way to do this. Um, in fact, the only thing I would say that you really need to pay attention to is just these two here, Angel of Vengeance and Beacon of Hope. I think the rest of it is kind of like whatever you feel about it. In general, Angel of Vengeance, what I want to focus on, I think a lot of the stuff, you can just screenshot this and follow along, but I want to focus on a couple things. I change up this tree quite a bit. For example, during the leveling process, I was using Nimbus of Light, Sunbolt, 
and Comet Fall spell like ability pretty much constantly. These spell like abilities are amazing and extremely, extremely powerful. And it's the reason why I was using them during the leveling leveling process is because you don't really get as many spell points as you would like to have on a favored soul. You wish you had could have an infinite amount, but honestly, uh, spell like abilities just really help you save on just the few that you do have. And it also means. I did take this Efficient Maximize and Quicken during the leveling process. You can leave these on for your other spells and actually be able to squeak by with just enough spell points to take out some of these monsters. Now, as I've said, um, there are some extra special favorite soul feats, uh, like the Knowledge of Battle, which lets you use your Wisdom to hit and damage with your weapons as opposed to Charisma. The other one is Purity of Spirit and Stout of Heart. Now, for uh, Laughs, I took Purity of Spirit because I wanted the extra mana so I could explode people with magic. This was fun for me. If you're somebody who is familiar with spellcasting and you're familiar with the way um, the quests go and you're not worried about running into traps, Purity of Spirit is awesome because Purity of Spirit gives you extra spell points to toy around with. But if you are prone to dying or getting one shot or stepping into traps or falling into wood chippers, then you would take uh, Stout of Heart. Now, to get back to the actual tree here, as I said, I took the spell-like abilities. Once I got to epics, I kind of entirely specced out of all the spell-like abilities and turned my tree into this. Beacon of Hope, you just want to grab Close Wounds as soon as possible. You can maximize this, empower this, and it just becomes the best heal ever, healing you for huge amounts. I mean, even right now, you can't see it, but it's doing, like, hundreds, even though it has, like, two-point cost and a one-second cooldown. It's very good to be able to do that to yourself. Then, uh, out of the Azamar tree, Falconry, um, you don't need these. I use these just for the uh, movement speed boost from Falconry, which I used in Epics to go through this really, really, really fast. And on top of that, I've also got the Azamar tree here as well, because Azamar gives wisdom. The healing hands, which I completely forgot to use once I left Heroics, because in Heroics, these are great as, like, spot heals, um, especially when you don't have as much healing amplification in Reaper mode and what have you. But once you get to Epics, you have so much crazy healing and you never run out of spell points. I never used them. I actually forgot I had them most of the time. The healing amp is nice. Uh, honestly, I think the Divine Protector is probably pretty bad. I would just swap this out for Blessings for the extra positive spell power and take something random somewhere else. Because uh, it is good. It gives you the um, healing amplification bonus and positive spell power. It's basically the same thing. Uh, but I forgot to use it Forgot to use it all the time. Although, this makes you have Angel Wings, which is kind of cool. So you have to decide on whether having the Angel Wings is actually worth it, which you can see here. Um, that's this effect. It's pretty cool. And then, of course, you have the Ascended Bond, which makes you super tanky. And then Falconry for the movement speed and the extra 5% hit points. As far as the Epic Destiny goes, my personal favorite is Exalted Angel. Exalted Angel without the actual mantle, which is bizarre, because you would think the mantle is very good, giving you disease immunity, infinity healing on yourself and your allies, and this big damage reduction effect. Well, um, the problem is, Shradi Champion exists and is in the video game. Until this changes, Prism... Stay good, that's going to be the best one. Um, this just makes it so you have a bunch of damage applying on each of your spells, and it adds such a high amount, and especially this light damage effect. It's massive. It's so much damage. So you're going to be using this most of the time. Now, something you'll notice, I took pretty much every single other thing in the entire tree, but what you'll notice is I also took the effect here, Bane of Undeath, and Shadows Upon You. Now, I want to reference this specifically because I think a lot of people sleep on this one. What this does is Shadows Upon You is when you turn undead, all enemies, not if they're vulnerable to turning, but all enemies that are within range get this debuff on them that reduces their saving throws by one. And when they are hit by anything from any, like, ally, a guy hits them, um, somebody shoots an arrow, you cast a spell, somebody else casts a spell, it increases the debuff by one to up to a total of minus five on their saving throws. So the benefit to this is if you're playing on R10 or you're doing something, if you're running away, Turn Undead is a very fast-moving ability. You can use it while walking, um, and the animation is very quick. You can then go ahead and use Bane of Undeath, or not turn, Bane of Undeath, the Turn Undead here, even though it will affect nothing because you're not a Charisma character and you have no Cleric level, so it doesn't work. But you can just press this button, and then all of a sudden, all the nearby monsters get shadows upon you, and effectively all their saving throws go down by 5, and it's very useful if you're somebody who's getting started into Reaper mode, or just to help out your allies, or if there's a Despair Reaper present. Like, I can think of like 30 reasons as to why this ability is very good. So if you happen to be around, it's good to mix in, especially near boss monsters, and monsters that happen to have evasion or improved evasion. And then 11 points in Draconic, because I like 10% spell cost reduction, and some extra spell power is pretty nice. Um, as far as gearing goes, gearing is very straightforward. Wisdom items, uh, or charisma, if you happen to be a charisma-based favorite soul, uh, grab yourself the uh, 
these like any scepters or anything that gives you radiant spell power or combustion spell power anything that's dcs like profane bonus to dcs or quality bonus to dcs uh, all these things are good and then in general um, if you have any set bonuses that work i was using the flame cleanse fury set from 15 to 20 but then once i got to 20 i didn't really care anymore i just put on some more wisdom items came with crafting coming in clutch give me some extra items like this cloak here or this set of goggles for plus six my evocation dcs was pretty nice just helped me kind of speed through and sprint through the leveling process here Anyways, that's pretty much all I have. As I mentioned in the preamble to this one, this character, I actually finally, for the first time, have published an actual list of what quests I do. So there'll be a link in the description if you're like, man, what kind of quests does Strimtom do? How does he level up? I don't have time to watch 60 hours of Twitch streaming, Strimtom, but I want to know what quests you do. How am I supposed to know? I have a whole list for you just in the description below. You'll be able to click it and go through this nice little formatted list with all the quests that I ran to make this character like this. There's also the qualifying factors of it. There's got information like how much favor you get, how many DDO points everything is worth. So you'll be able to kind of track it out there if that's something you want to follow. However, that's pretty much all I have for you today. So thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, make sure you double subscribe, which is you subscribe here. And then you wait a little bit. And then if you notice you're unsubscribed, you subscribe again. You just got to slam that button. And then also get stay tuned for the next video that we have coming up here on the channel. Thank you for watching. And also, if you are feeling good today, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm going to go. Goodbye.